Hello, my name is Sasa Juvonen, and in this video, we'll have a look on what will happen with SharePoint Framework uh, in the next step. So we are recording this video in the 20th of November, right after Ignite and quite a few other conferences. And, and some of those uh, conference uh, recordings and community call recordings unfortunately failed. So we're making sure that you will have all of the needed information, which we go on through in the community calls and in Ignite and in our demos by re-recording some of these uh, settings. Now, as part of the Ignite presentations and a part of the Ignite messaging, we talked about SharePoint Framework v Next, and, and this slide is telling that AKMS X FX, and what does that mean? Well, it means that we are introducing a unified toolchain for Microsoft 365 workload. So you are able to use one unified uh, toolchain, and in our Ignite messaging, it was called Yo Microsoft 365 to actually create solutions, and then based on that solution settings, your solution will be exposed to either in Microsoft Teams or in, in Office add-ins or as an Outlook web access or as a SharePoint framework web part or in all of them. So there will be multiple different surface locations or surfaces where you can expose your solution to be available. This new model does not replace any of the existing models in any of those things. So if you have a existing a web application which you exposed as Microsoft Teams to, that is still an option in the future as well. So this is an add-on capability of introducing this kind of an Office 365 component way of thinking. Now, as part of this, uh, we also uh, introduce a native support for Fluid Framework. And Fluid Framework is something which we announced in Build 2019. Uh, it is a real-time communication uh, it provides a real-time communication model between multiple people across the, the regions, across the world, uh, accessing the same components. Um, it will be used uh, behind the scenes by our out-of-the-box functionalities. It can be used also by extensibility. So your own components can actually be taking advantage of Fluid Framework and, and in real time replicate changes and, and events between the, the persons who are accessing the same solution across the world. And that's a pretty cool functionality. We're going to do a live demo on that one uh, in a second. It will be alpha version of the fluid framework so it's pretty early and pretty rough but you'll get the idea uh, what we're planning to do with uh, with SharePoint oh, sorry with fluid framework together with SharePoint framework be next in the future now we're also looking into obviously having SharePoint framework support in store or whatever it will be called not necessarily SharePoint framework um, and this is by enabling SharePoint framework to be available in the app source as well so it will be a, a valid solution there Looking also having a faster inner dev loop, and so monthly releases. We tried to do this at some point already with SharePoint Framework. Then there was other other priorities, unfortunately, which changed um, the internal uh, workloads, um, and we're looking into getting back on this one. And more extensions, extensions, extensions for SharePoint Framework as well. And this means that there will be more extensibility around SharePoint Framework across different functionalities. So already as part of 1.10, SharePoint Framework is the extensibility model uh, or preview for extensibility model for Microsoft Search. And there will be new UI elements which you can modify, navigation nodes which you can modify uh, during the, the of upcoming releases of SharePoint Framework. And this is planned to happen. Uh, all of these are planned to happen in the calendar year 2020. And um, this is subject to change. So some of these things might still change, uh, but this is the direction where we're looking into heading uh, uh, together with SharePoint Framework. Now, before we go to the uh, actual demo related on Fluid Framework and what does it mean that we're taking advantage of that one in the Microsoft 365 components, let's briefly have a look on the journey uh, of SharePoint Framework and how, how this has evolved uh, so you'll understand what is the role of Fluid and, and the renaming of things and everything else. Now, we started SharePoint Framework journey uh, by introducing a Yo Microsoft, uh, Microsoft SharePoint generator um, to create web parts and modern web parts using the modern web stack. Um, it, it was a SharePoint specific SDK and you could ask access and different cloud services, they get advantage of those. So we had a SharePoint web parts capability and we had the workbench uh, as a developer tooling available. Now, quite soon, uh, then uh, we introduced uh, the Microsoft Craft support uh, for the SharePoint framework as well. Technically, it's not just about web parts, it's also about the extensions, but we could act, take advantage really easily Microsoft Craft without again the, having the force to go to the Azure AD, creating an application, granting permissions, everything else. So in SharePoint sign, we wanted to simplify that process. It's still 100% uh, in line with the Azure AD and permission mapping, but we streamlined the experience so that for developers, this thing could be as easy as possible. Now, 
quite soon after that one, we then uh, released a support for implementing Microsoft Teams tabs using the exactly the same uh, technology stack. So using Node.js, Human Generator, Gulps, Visual Studio Code, and React based typically, uh, you can actually implement all of this stuff using any JavaScript framework out there um, because it is a JavaScript framework um, agnostic. Uh, so there's no requirements on which one you use. Now internally in Microsoft, you use React uh, because we made that decision quite a few years back already and we are betting on the React side. So there will be more reusable components in React side uh, because of that reason. But it doesn't mean again that you have to implement your stuff using React. Now, as part of the 1.10 release, uh, 1.10 release, which is coming relatively soon, like I said, we are recording this on 20th of November, we are now adding a preview of the Outlook Web Access support. Uh, so you can actually implement Outlook Web Access add-ins using the SharePoint framework as well. And pretty soon after that, uh, we already previewed this, uh, uh, having add-ins for Word and Excel and PowerPoint being implemented using SharePoint framework. Now, that's now, that even sounds really interesting. Why are you using SharePoint Framework to create Microsoft Teams tabs? Why are you using SharePoint Framework to create Outlook Web Access extensibility? That doesn't still feel right. So as part of this journey, and we're looking into also renaming SharePoint Framework, um, and that's an ongoing discussion uh, currently still with marketing, what it's going to be called. In Microsoft uh, Ignite 2019, we called it Yo, Microsoft 365. So um, the official statements and everything else are coming in spring 2020 timeframe. Um, this is still not, um, well, 2020 time, spring 2020 timeline, you can definitely see more functioning demos and more functioning uh, capabilities around the whole end-to-end -end Microsoft 365 platform uh, extensibility. Now, what is the Fluid framework here? Well, using the Microsoft 365 components or your Microsoft, Microsoft 365, you can take advantage also of Fluid Framework. And as part of the Fluid Framework, you'll get that real-time communication of events and function uh, on behaviors between multiple channels. So and you also get a Fluid Preview Canvas, which can be used for demo, uh, developer tooling purposes. So you'll understand you can demonstrate functionalities on Fluid Preview Canvas as well. And that's actually available as long as you sign up for the Fluid Preview. We're going to add a link on the video around that one as well. Um, there is a private preview where you can sign up and then uh, there's alternative ways. Um, it will be more public uh, on spring 2020 um, from a implementation perspective. But let's actually have a look on the Fluid Framework in practice. So what does it actually mean? And what, how can I, what is the, the approach to take that into account in the concept of this Microsoft 365 components? So let's actually jump uh, to one of my uh, tenants, so one of the demo environments. I'm going to use this one for that one. And I'm going to actually go to the Fluid Preview Canvas. And uh, this is not yet available uh, outside of the, the Microsoft environments. So um, it's, it's not necessarily, depending again on, on your tenant and your status and everything else, it might be working, might not be working. But this is basically a Fluid can a Preview Canvas uh, where we can build uh, individual uh, articles, we can add individual components. So the document itself is consisted from the fragments of the document. So as an example, this is one of the fragments. Uh, that's one of the fragments. This is a table fragment. And the table fragment, if I modify, for example, origins to be 200, you can say that the, the, the chart is actually reflected by those changes. So there are individual fragments of the documents. And what's really cool about uh, the Fluid Framework is that if I add uh, another instance of the Fluid Framework in here, you can actually uh, see almost real time the modifications what people are doing. So we, the, it doesn't really matter in this case, I'm using uh, uh, the same account in the both sides, but it does work with multiple accounts across the regions, cross countries, and all of that. So it doesn't really matter from that perspective. So if somebody makes modifications, for example, Orange is, oh, that's a mistake, Orange is was actually 20, you can actually see the reflected changes on all of the other instances on real time. So there's a real time collaboration options uh, between the things. But it doesn't actually end there. So it doesn't just end there where you can actually have a real time collaboration in Excel files or in Word files or in PowerPoint files or in files you can actually take advantage of this real-time communication options in your extensibility as well. 
and you as a developer, you can implement your own fragments of the documents. So as an example, you can implement uh, your own components. In this case, uh, there's a dev kitchen demo component, which I'm going to actually take advantage from this document in this side. So uh, this is my uh, Microsoft 365 uh, component. Uh, it is basically taking advantage of the Fluid components. It's, it's automatically, if it's Microsoft 365 component, it is automatically have access on the Fluid framework and it can take advantage of that one. And then it can be surfaced in multiple different locations. And quite simple component, uh, you can adjust the size, height, of that font and I can okay, also modify uh, the text in there. So let's call it my uh, M365 component or whatever it will be called uh, whenever uh, that will be truly released available for the developers. Okay, quite simple component, but it's a one component which has been implemented using SharePoint Framework V next, so, so the next evolution of SharePoint Framework. All of the same goodies, you can use whatever JavaScript framework, you can use whatever component as you want. Now, what's really cool about these individual components, these individual fragments, you can actually take advantage of these fragments individually. So I can actually share a fragment of the document individually with somebody else. And whenever we do modifications in here, those modifications are actually reflected on the other side as well. So now if, uh, if we actually modify, for example, uh, let's call it, uh, oh, let's actually put the orange is to 50 or 45. Oop. You can actually see that the modification is getting reflected uh, in this case in a small delay on the other component as well. Um, this is a preview capability. Uh, so it, there might be some hiccups on, on what's happening and most likely actually this additional table here, let me actually get rid of that, uh, is causing the additional uh, small hiccup. There we go. So you can actually see the modifications in real time in the in the fragments of the documents with the other one has subscribed. Uh, there we go. And now the modification is available. And the beauty of this one is that you can actually share this fragment in any other fluid supported areas or surface. And there will be multiple different surfaces in Microsoft 365 or Office 365 which support this. So you can send this in email or you can send that in Microsoft Teams, which we demonstrated in the build demos as well. Now, one of the options in here is that you can take one of your own components and implemented components, uh, which isn't as fancy looking as the chart component or a table component. It is just a simple custom component with a custom font. You can actually surface that component in any of the other surfaces with support uh, these areas as well. So let me actually create a new page uh, in SharePoint. Let's do the, the plank page, uh, create that one. And I can actually take this fragment of a component and paste that one on the page and we'll wait a while. And because it's fluid supported uh, fragment, we can actually see the modification uh, being available in here. And what's the beauty of this one is that the fragment is fully dynamic. So I can actually write here, see how it actually changes. And you can actually see the modification being reflected on real time on the other side of the of the uh, component or the or other copies of the fragment. So the root uh, source is this one in here, which is the fluid component and a fluid document in the fluid document. But then we can actually see the changes being reflected on the other side. It obviously works on the other side as well. So if I modify this one, uh, it actually reflects the change on the other side. It, it is really up to the design. How do you want your component to work? Uh, so up again, you can decide um, what are the what is the behavior, which one, which direction, what is the events which are getting reflected using then the underlying Fluid Framework implementation. Now it doesn't actually just end there, so it actually gets even more interesting. So let me actually get rid of there. Let me get rid of this one, so we don't actually have any references on that one. And let me actually jump to another template. And in here, we can actually see a, a, the same component. Uh, so we can actually see the modification, uh, M365 component. And let me actually create a one more page and one more plank. So like, like shown already in the previous uh, demo or previous section, I can take that component and I can paste it in SharePoint because SharePoint is a fluid aware. It will know how to render that uh, component there. And, uh, 
we can we can actually see that connectivity between things. Now we talked about the fact that this is actually Microsoft 365 component, and that means that you can take advantage of the same component in multiple different platforms. So you, I can actually create a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, add a new slide, add a let's add a title a title only slide there, and I can take that component. Let me actually copy the component. There we go, and paste that component. Uh, in the window and voila we actually have the same component in here as well and we can modify the component value from PowerPoint so again the same component same implementation same extensibility uh, taking advantage of fluid components uh, I can now modify that uh, in the in the PowerPoint as well. And obviously, it's not a coincidence that I have Outlook Web Access here open. So obviously, everything works in the, in the Outlook Web Access as well. So here's my Outlook Web Access email. Uh, I can actually just take the component. Uh, let me actually get the component from the, oh, where is cute? And uh, there's my component. Let's actually get it included in here. And it's not unfortunately now getting actually, oh, there it is. Now it's actually getting working uh, properly. There we go. Small hiccup uh, there. Uh, but again, like I said, this is relatively alpha in alpha status still. Uh, but I can actually modify the component, uh, modify the compo component in Outlook. So as you can see, one implementation one experience in multiple different channels in multiple different experiences and they're all truly connected so in theory you could be able to even send this email to somebody else and the somebody else can actually then modify the settings or update the information so hey hey melissa can you actually modify uh, this section of a, a table and it has the back-end connectivity the ori original documents um, and you can modify the settings or whatever components and, and experiences you want to implement using the, the Microsoft 365 components, you taking advantage of fluid experiences as well. Again, there's a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different functionalities available in here uh, in the future side. But that's, like I said, pretty early. Uh, we are starting pr uh, private preview by end of 2019, and then there will be a public preview uh, in 2020, um, and there will be more functionalities, more in the insights and more options available around this model uh, in the future in 2020, spring 2020. And you can expect in build uh, 2020, there will be definitely more demos and more information available around the Fluid Framework. It was demonstrated first time in Ignite 20, 2019 uh, in early November, and it is November 20th, 2019, right now where we are recording this one. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, if that gives you good ideas of, of uh, let's say, oh, I could actually use this functionality for X and Y and Z. Uh, please give us feedback. If something is missing, something is weird, something is strange, um, please give us feedback. Your input is the crucial piece uh, of the puzzle. So we know what you need uh, to be able to successful within your day-to-day -day work and to be able to fulfill your business requirements. So please, please, please keep that feedback coming. But thank you for watching and hopefully you find all of this interesting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.